After the recent misrepresentation ban wave, many e-commerce entrepreneurs are struggling to get their account unsuspended. I've personally seen this error appearing when you connect your products from Shopify to Merchant Center or shortly after you just created your very first Google Ads campaigns in your account. And no, basically it doesn't matter in what niche you're selling or where your company is registered, I've seen started dropshippers as well as multi-million dollar brands getting suspended from their merchant center literally overnight. And now they all face the same frustrating situation. They are all not being able to advertise on the most profitable e-commerce platform there is right now, which is Google Ads, of course. And that's exactly the purpose why I created this video for you. In this video, I give you clear and easy to follow guidelines that have been proven to work for more than 300 projects that my team and I personally already have worked with. And since Google is actually never giving any insight of why this suspension happened in the first place, it all comes down to proven to work effective strategies that you can follow to invest your time and energy wisely getting your account unsuspended as soon as possible. My name is Robin. I've been active in the e-commerce industry since early 2019, whereas I also successfully help people unlock their Google Merchant Center and scale profitable on Google Ads. Let's dive right into the checklist that I've prepared for you today and make sure to click the link in the description to download it for yourself so it's even more easy to follow along. Without further ado, let's dive right into my screen. All right, so there we are in the newest checklist which I created for for the merchant center to unsuspend it from the misrep presentation error and if you receive a successful unlock it looks like this um, dear google merchant center user uh, your merchant center account blah, blah, blah. the requested review of your misrep presentation error has been completed and no longer appears in your merchant center account if you have any questions we want to help contact the merchant center support here so this is how the success message will look like after watching this whole video and applying all strategies what i've implemented right here so let me dive right into the first uh, thing we have several topics and i will explain everything step by step so make sure to watch until the end of this video so first the general checks ensure that your website is profitably set up with essential trust signals right all that google cares about is that the visitor on uh, the platform goes to your website and have a trustworthy experience so that is always the idea behind everything that i'm going to explain in this video it's all about trust showing your trust to the potential visitor and to google that you are a legit advertiser right so first of all you need to have a business email uh, that is linked to your domain so you cannot use a personal gmail address uh, that is not long longer valid anymore and it doesn't represent you as a business uh, you need to scan your website for the broken link checker uh, I, I implement all hyperlinks actually in the notion document so check it out in the link in the description uh, you need to make sure that your speed is optimized according to the google page speed score uh, i will implement the link uh, to that platform as well here uh, you need to double check also that your website is secure i will double uh, add the link on uh, here as well so you can scan your website to see if there are any issues appear right there also you need to make sure that you have an https uh, domain name uh, with an ssl security so most of the time you can see it on the top uh, where is your url located that you have this log icon there so that's super important for this kind of issues uh, it's business phone number is optionally uh, if you have one it's very good for the trust because the potential visitors can uh, call you or email you right so the more contact options you have the more trust you have in the eyes of merchant center the employee what is checking your website as well as the potential visitor so that's very important also you need to have the right business address formulated in the right way so as you can see here we start with the street name uh, the street number uh, the city where your business is registered uh, the state or the province uh, the zip code and the country you need to mention in in this way because in the merchant center account you also need to display it in this way so the algorithm can pick up your information in the same way as mentioned in the merchant center so that makes it more easy to be unblocked also if you have any uh, you can uh, list your Google Maps location there on the contact page. Uh, it would be good, but not really necessary, but it can always help uh, leading to a suspension. Also, we need to make sure that we have a proper main menu and footer menu, uh, meeting and header menu here as well. 
Uh, also, we need to implement uh, different things such as the transit, the shipping and the return duration in the uh, policy pages. Uh, later down the line, I will implement some copy and paste templates in the premium version of this template as well. Uh, and also you need to make sure that you mention the accepted payment methods. So if you are accepting payments through Visa, MasterCard, Klarna, Ideal or any other payment methods, you need to implement them in the payment methods uh, page you need to implement in your footer. So that will lead us to uh, the second tab, website header requirements. So what things you need to implement in your header uh, in order to qualify for the Google requirements. So first of all, of course, you need to have a home page in the uh, main menu. You need to mention the all products page for the collections. You need to have at least an about us page. Uh, it's optional, but recommended, actually highly recommended to make sure to implement that. Uh, you need to have a contact page in your header menu and the track your order page. Uh, I will implement the link to the uh, best track your order page um, plugin there is right now for Shopify in this template as well. So later after the video, you can find it here. That brings us to topic number three, um, the product pages and the contact options. So this is a super important uh, topic, actually. All policies must be uh, Google compliant, right? And therefore I implement it right here. So for example, on your contact page on your website, you need to have at least two options how people can contact you. Either a business email, the address, uh, the phone number and things like that. So you need to have at least two contact options. Also, you need to mention that your customers uh, can reach you between Monday to Friday uh, at your given time. For example, you can copy and paste this template if you have access to the Notion. So make sure to check it in the description as well. So here we mentioned the template that you can copy and paste from Monday to Friday from 9 to 5 o'clock, uh, which is very nice. Also, the frequently asked questions you need to mention on your contact page with a hyperlink to the frequently asked questions page. And also here, all the legal policies that you need to have 100% on your website are mentioned here, uh, such as the privacy policy, shipping policy, a return policy, payment policy, terms of service, and the track your order page. Uh, I will create all um, templates that you can literally copy and paste and replace your business information in the premium version of this checklist as well. Uh, then we go down for the contact page. Uh, here you can actually see that you need to have a bunch of things on the checkout page as well. So the payment methods need to be functionally and working. So you cannot apply for a merchant center if your payment methods are not working because uh, the merchant center is scanning the website as of your going live already. So the payment methods need to work as well. There need to be like a smooth operating checkout page. No thing can cross each other or any placement banners there. Uh, but most of the time that's not the case in Shopify, but in WooCommerce, it can be possible uh, to face any issues in the checkout page. All right, that brings us to the website footer requirements. So what things in the footer you need to have in place uh, when it comes down to the criteria that Merchant Center actually wants from you on the website. So first of all, the footer need to contain the privacy policy, the shipping policy, the return policy, the payment policy, the terms of service, uh, the contact us page, the customer support, the about us page, the track your order page, uh, the company name and logo is optional, but uh, highly recommended. A link to the uh, frequently asked questions. Uh, extra bonus is the social media profiles. If you have a TikTok, uh, Facebook, Instagram, doesn't really matter. More social profiles, uh, the better. And the payment icons as well, all the way down at the website. And all the policies right here, of course, need to be hyperlinked to another page, but you need to mention them in the footer. And that brings us to the website compliance and quality. Uh, actually, here you can see you need to have all legal pages added, as I previously mentioned as well. And I will implement the copy and paste templates later down the line. Uh, you need to absolutely avoid fake trust badges because Google can actually see if you have fake trust because they can also scan other Trustpilot reviews, for example. So if you mention five stars, but you have one star or two stars in the Trustpilot, it's so easy to recognize that for Google to crawl this information. Uh, so avoid that by any means. Also, you need to have the tax settings properly configured. So you need to have the right percentage for the right countries. I mentioned that on your website as well. And also at all means, try to avoid over promising and misleading statements. Don't claim things that you cannot back up, such as medical claims, problem solving claims, shipping claims that you make that are not even possible, right? And there are a lot of uh, misleading claims available statements. Uh, in my premium version of this checklist, I will implement 
the list of trigger words that you need to avoid at all costs. Quick side note in between the presentation, make sure to get the checklist with the link in the description as well, so you invest your time and energy wisely getting your account unsuspended. Without further ado, let's continue with the video. So then when it comes down to the legal page templates, uh, we will uh, implement them later in the premium version, which you can copy and paste right here. So we can leave them open and leave it for you there. Uh, then the essentials, what you need to have in the Merchant Center account to be 100% transparent. Uh, you need to have your domain name claimed in the Merchant Center itself. So you can only claim one domain name in one account at the same time and verified in the Merchant Center. Uh, you need to implement your shipping and return policies the right way in your Merchant Center account as well. So if you mention, for example, one to three days uh, processing time on the website you need to implement that in your merch center account as well and when it comes down to the shipping we most of the time take five to seven days for a drop shipping website you need to implement them on the front end of your website as well as in the back end in your merchant center account so this information need to be 100 percent synchronized therefore the business information is accurate and complete as well on your website and it also need to synchronize with the information you have on the shopify back end shopify front end and the merchant center account and especially also in the google ads account if you already have any everything need to be synchronized in order to not only prevent but also solve uh, misrepresentation errors so then we go here for the extra attention points right here which i see are working most of the time uh, the payment options and methods must be functioning correctly so i need to make sure that all apis are working correctly if you talk about uh, WooCommerce for example and from Shopify payments you need to make sure that you're able to accept payments uh, the checkout process must be working as well all right what is also important to link the contact page on several legal pages as well so all the way down in the policies you need to mention the link where people can click to go to your contact page so you can uh, replace the website here for your website and copy and paste that in your legal pages also it is very strong uh, for the eyes of Google is if you have a Google Ads account preferably with already some ad spend linked to your merchant center account uh, with uh, one or two payment methods that's even better so you already showed that you're a legit advertiser waving the misrepresentation arrow much faster from your merchant center account as well uh, so therefore that can be extra beneficial to unlock your account and also the business name and logo should match in your merchant center account so in the merchant center account it's a little bit strange but they um, they mention company name but in company name you need to mention your website name so that's a very important thing to mention website name there and on your website so again you have an extra touch point of the algorithm as well also here the business template uh, you can literally copy and paste my template what i have right here if you access uh, the link in the description and come to this notion template uh, as said above you need to follow this uh, specific structure uh, when it comes down to your business address you need to uh, paste your uh, business email right here the contact form url uh, your phone number your company number i see that tax number is missing so let me add it here tax number and then also you need to mention the customer service so we are available monday to friday from 9 a.m to 5 p.m uh, so that's also very important for example amsterdam time so that is also very important to mention as well and then last but not least i found out a specific way how you can implement uh, and review the new way actually uh, previously uh, we were uh, having a special way how to apply for a review for the merchant center in another way but to give this secretly and i want that you download the checklist to have all information and successfully unlock your merchant center account uh, you can open this last tab uh, how to request a review for your merchant center the right way to unlock it even faster than I previously explained in other videos because what you need to understand is that the strategies behind unlocking a merchant center always change so therefore download this document it's always up to date even now you see that I'm adding a few new things right so every week or every two weeks I add a bunch of things that are proven to work for projects that we are working on so if you ever need help regarding your merchant center make sure to click the link in the description as well and I will add some call to action as well later this document is going to be very helpful for you because it gives you clear li uh, lines where to work on where to focus your time and energy with the goal of unlocking your merchant center and receiving this email 
uh, shortly after you apply for a review. All right, and those were the essential things you need to have in place on the website in order to get your Google Merchant Center account unsuspended. If this video was helpful for you, make sure to grab the checklist with the link in the description as well, because I will regularly update this checklist so I have always the latest version. So make sure to download it from the link in the description. My name is Robin, thank you for watching this video. And in the recommendation video after this, I will go over a live audit of an account that has many things wrong on the front end leading to a merchant center misrepresentation error. That video is super helpful. I will go over a lot of topics, so make sure to check it out as well. I see you there.